Now, what makes a superbike? A big price tag is usually a good starting point, but superbikes don't always have to mean wallet smashing expense. What we expect from a superbike is superlative performance and tremendous potential for speed. Bikes designed to be ridden hard and fast. Bikes that make you feel, well, super. Over the next few minutes, we're gonna show you six of our favorite bikes that have met this superbike criteria. And they're actually bikes that we've ridden and rated. But this is where you come in to tell us why we're wrong or very occasionally right in the comments. So let's dive in with six of the best superbikes. Starting with the 10 grand Stork Fascinario 3 Platinum. Okay, super mouthful of a name aside, this German designed bike offers incredible high-end performance, as you'd hope for a bike that costs as much as a small hatchback. Though Stork has offered more affordable bikes in recent years, its heart lies in developing state-of-the-art high-performance bikes that push carbon fibre to its limit, resulting in some of the lightest and stiffest bikes Rotis has ever tested and some of the most expensive. Such fastidious attention to detail and cutting edge design doesn't come cheap. The frame is packed with the latest thinking when it comes to carbon fiber and aerodynamics. And the expertise the company has in these areas is abundantly clear when you get on the bike. The key to the bike's speed and aero performance is the advanced sectional aerodynamic shaping found on the down tube. It's a teardrop profile with a trailing edge cut off, like a cam tail. The bowed fork legs are intended to reduce drag around the front wheel, helping you go faster. It's light too at just 840 grams for a frame, thanks to advanced carbon fiber layup. But it's not the lightest though. For this money, you might reasonably expect a lighter frame. Both Trek and Specialized are offering lighter frames with their latest Imonda and Tarmac respectively. But all of that aside, the result is an exceptionally fast bike, and that's abundantly clear. It's like you're being shoved along by a force 10 gale, such as the high speeds a stalk makes look easy. The low weight of the bike and the high level of stiffness gives a delicious immediacy to the way the stalk responds to your inputs. It's oh so precise and nimble. Point it at an apex and it'll follow your directions faithfully. It would be easy to sum up the new Stork as an overpriced carbon race bike, but the performance is top level stuff, up there with the best rivals in this exclusive superbike category. Precise handling, great speed, and generally good comfort ensure there's a lot to like. Aero performance meets disc brake stopping power with Cervelos S3 disc. It's a fast choice, has an insatiable appetite for speed and razor sharp handling, but the ride is far from smooth. Canadian brand Cervelo has long been at the forefront of aerodynamics. Its soloist was arguably the first aero road bike and spawned many imitations over the years. Its aero road bike range is now spearheaded by the S5, the choice of Mark Cavendish, and it's the most aerodynamic offering. Now the S3 trades some of that aeroness for a more rounded package that balances weight, stiffness and comfort. And now it's available with disc brakes as the company slowly but surely rolls out more disc brake options. First with the R3 disc, then the all new C5 endurance model more recently. There are the now standard 12mm through axles at the fork and rear dropouts coupled with flat mount disc brake calipers. The switch from quick release to 12mm through axles has unsurprisingly resulted in more stiffness. Cervelo says there's an 8% increase in head tube stiffness and 9% at the bottom bracket. That high level of stiffness is detectable when you push the bike into a corner or leap out of the saddle to cover an attack. It responds with virtually no lag or hesitation. Pace comes easily to the S3 disc and it winds up superbly the speed ratcheting up with the sort of acceleration that only comes from the stiffest and more aero road bikes. Get into a fast paced line and the bike feels right at home, stable at high speed, even in gusty conditions, and nimble enough to react to sudden changes of direction. It's clearly a bike made for racing and riding extremely fast, and its razor sharp handling demands that you have your wits about you. The geometry promotes a very head down position, ideal for charging along at full gas. It's definitely not a bike 
for cruising around the lanes, admiring the views and talking about the cricket. The brand new Merida Reacto Disc Team E has only just launched, but we've tested it and found it to be a fast and responsive aero bike that offers plenty of comfort alongside the all-weather capability of hydraulic disc brakes. This bike is an absolute peach, described Matt Brett in his review of the bike. Now that's what I call a ringing endorsement. The Reacto is an aero bike designed for racing, and the big news for 2018 is the launch of the disc brake version. If you think disc brakes introduce more drag than rim brakes, well, you'd be correct, but the difference is slim. Merida says that the difference in aero efficiency between rim brake and disc brake versions of the Reacto is less than one watt at 45 kilometers an hour. That's basically naff all. The Reacto still looks like the previous model. It uses the same NACA fastback profiles on all the tubes apart from the top tube and the seat stays. But Merida has slimmed down the tube shapes and lowered the junction between the seat stays and the seat tube and now runs those seat stays closer to the rear wheel with a larger outward bend in the lower section, taking advantage of the new UCI rules. On the road, the new Reacto certainly feels as stiff as the old one. And while it doesn't boast the same level of frame rigidity as Merida's Sculptura, it doesn't lag too far behind. There's a little less rigidity at the bottom bracket during a full-on sprint or when you get out of the saddle and power up a short climb, but it's hardly noticeable and the fork feels solid and accurate when you rail hard into a fast bend. The overall feeling is one of solidity. The reactor is quick off the mark and responds beautifully to surges in effort when you're trying to get a gap, close one down, or just trying to stick to the wheel of someone who's really digging deep. It doesn't have to be made from carbon to be considered a superbike. Titanium has been used to make some of the finest superbikes over the years, and the Eros from US brand Alchemy offers a truly stunning ride that compares well to not only the best titanium road bikes, but to many of the best carbon fiber frames too. What the Eros does extremely well is make the case that titanium still has a valuable place in the bicycle world. What gets some cyclists all misty-eyed when talking about titanium is the magical ride quality it offers, which essentially comes down to the fact that titanium is lighter and stronger than steel and aluminium, but offers the same vibration dampening of both materials, making it possible to build a very comfortable frame. Alchemy has used large diameter tubes in the Eros with a beefy down tube, chunky chain stays, oversized press fit bottom bracket, and tapered head tube. The result? A thoroughly modern look. And all that culminates in a ride that's responsive, relaying your commands into direction changes with no noticeable lag. If your numbers come up this week in the lottery and you want one of the most beautiful handling road bikes, make sure to give Eros a closer look. It puts in a stellar performance and excels at everything. Fast on the flat and climbs, comfortable on longer rides, and an absolute joy in the descents. We could have picked the Colnago C60, but we plumped for the concept because it's the first true aero race bike from the storied Italian brand. The Colnago concept aims to rival the latest aero road bikes and faces some extremely tough competition from the likes of the Canyon Air Road and the Specialized Venge Vias, to name just a couple in a rapidly maturing category that's favoured by both World Tour professional cyclists and keen non-racing amateurs alike. Aerodynamics and the understanding of how the air flows around the bicycle frame is an increasingly understood area of bike design. And to develop the concept, the Italian company went through some 41 design iterations, yes, 41, and extensive wind tunnel testing before rubber stamping the final production bike. And that work has paid off. The concept has an insatiable appetite for speed. It's quick in all circumstances, climbs, descents, flat and undulating roads, everywhere, the bike really shines. It's an exciting bike to ride fast, and like all good aero road bikes, encourages you to ride flat out. That firm ride, frame and fork stiffness, ensure the concept accurately follows your inputs, whether through the handlebar or the pedals, 
and react very positively to your body language, whether you're blasting up an uphill sprint finish or bombing through a curving descent. The concept is, without a doubt, a stunning bike with an awesome speed and excellent handling that is synonymous with the legendary Italian brand. Picking the final superbike in this roundup was tricky, but in the end it came down to the Canyon Air Road because it offers superbike performance at a price that undercuts most other superbikes. The Air Road is Canyon's go-to aero race bike and is now available with disc brakes. The good news is that the Air Road CF SLX disc is every bit as good as the regular rim braked Air Road. Fast, comfortable and with predictable handling but enhanced by the improved braking performance of the hydraulic discs. Yes, there's a weight penalty. You'll be really hard pressed to detect that when you're screaming along the road at full chat. With its Trident 2.0 tube profiles, which are essentially cut off aerofoil, cam tail shape, and skinny head tube and fork blades, the Air Road is a fast bike. It requires less effort to ride fast than regular road bikes. Even without a wind tunnel at hand, it's clear out on the road that it's an aerodynamically efficient bike. The drag is further reduced by fully internal hose and wire routing, even including around the handlebar, with Canyon's own one-piece setup providing a very clean and uncluttered front end. The hydraulic disc brakes are a revelation on demanding and challenging descents, providing a fine level of comfort and all the stopping power you could need should a car suddenly pull out in front of you because that's the sort of real-world hazard we non-professional racers have to deal with on an almost daily basis. I can see the comments now, but don't disc brakes cause a lot of drag? Not you'll notice in the real world. Canyon itself says the discs increase drag by nearly one watt compared to a rim brake in its wind tunnel testing. Yep, a single watt. That's essentially negligible. In the Air Road CF SLX disc, you can enjoy performance, handling, and aero advantage of the standard design without any of the compromise in braking performance. That's quite a collection of bikes, we think you'll agree. And yes, we know there are loads of other bikes out there that could have been included. So feel free to add any of your favorite superbikes in the comments below. The big question is, if you won the lottery tomorrow, which one of these would you choose? Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, then give us a thumbs up to help out the channel. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.